Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to at another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. So here you can see I have discussed or I have taken published videos on how to execute the Java the JMeter test using Azure DevOps. So I have showed you how to install the JM and the Java the JMeter and then how to run it or even I have given you options of how to execute JMeter test from Azure repository using Azure pipeline and then how to execute JMeter test in Azure DevOps without installing JMeter and how to execute multiple JMX in a single pipeline. So today in this video we are going to see about how to execute a load runner test using Azure DevOps and the special thing about this is you don't need any repository you don't need either you don't have to upload your scripts inside your Azure repository or you don't need to publish or you don't need to push your scripts to the JMeter repository. So today we will see how to do or how to run that test without pushing them to any repository and having them in your own setup. But the essential thing here to notice, we are implementing this execution as part of your CI CD which is continuous integration and continuous development so when you start to implement this process automatically every time when there is a push in the code or when you want to make any automatic executions you can very well do that so that is what we are going to see here so before we move on to the video this is me Avasan Shanmugam I welcome you all to Little Slaw YouTube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet like share the video with your friends so first let's see so here i'm into azure devops and i'm logging into azure repo underscore jm and then i'm moving to the pipelines so under pipelines let me choose the pipelines option so i'm going to create a pipeline so i'm clicking on the create pipeline and under this I'm choosing the use the classic editor to create a pipeline without YAML. So when I choose this, the next option is DevOps will ask me to choose the source. So for now, I'm just choosing the Azure repo kit, which is the default one and the team project, which you already saw. So it, which is Azure repo underscore JM and the repository. Again, I'm just, just choosing this or uh, whichever it's the default and then even the branch so just having the master as a branch so in case if you have your main branch please go ahead with that and then i'm clicking on continue so now this will take me to the template so here there are multiple templates where i have the yaml template i have various other dotnet asp.net templates but i'm going to choose the empty job so once i choose the empty job it will take me to the agent job so here at the top i have the get sources where we have already configured those parts. So next part is the agent job. So here I'm not going to make any changes. So I'm just keeping whatever the default changes here. So the next thing is I'm going to add the task. So what is the task is which is the load runner. So when you type load runner automatically, if you already have installed your load runner enterprise test, you will have this under your task. And then I'm adding this to our project. So again, just I'm telling you, this is load runner enterprise test. So in case if you do not have this in your Azure DevOps, please go ahead to the marketplace and install it and automatically you will get it to your tasks. And I'm adding it now. So moving to the execute load runner enterprise test. So I'm just choosing the task version as one. The display name is going to be executing the load runner test the L lre server and port so here you will have to give your the lre url which you use to log into your lre account which is the load runner enterprise account so you'll have to give your lre account here and then coming back to the username so at this point so in case if you want to authenticate with token you can very well choose this but now we will try the username option. So what you can enter your username here. And then the next part is you have to enter your password. And then if you see. So once you enter your 
username and password you'll have to enter your domain and project so here under so once you authenticate it under this you have your domain and your project so once you enter your domain details and your project details you can you can click login in this page but here in this screen you will have to log in to your LRE and get your test ID so in case if your test ID is 100 you will have to enter your test ID and you will have to manually select your test instance ID so in case if your test instance ID is again 50 so you'll have to choose your test instance ID so that you can very well choose the test and you can execute it you can ignore the proxy URL the proxy user and proxy password since you are executing your test inside your organization network so you don't need to fill these details the proxy URL the proxy user and the proxy password in case if you get any errors based on the authentication then you can check with your network team or your development team or the testing team and fill these details and then coming back to the trending you can choose do not trend and then the slot time slot duration you can choose the entire duration of the test so in case if you are running this test for 90 minutes or for one hour or two hour you can choose that in the duration and using virtual user day license so this is not required for now since you are using your load on enterprise test and you can ignore all the other options and coming back to the control options so in case if you see that this particular task is failed you can do a retry so for example like at least for three times you can retry it so in case if there are any blockers that are blocking your test to execute so this will retry and this will execute the test and it might be helpful in some situations and then you can even add the timeout in seconds sorry in minutes so you can add the timeout here so after the timeout is done automatically the process will stop so these are some of the options the control options which you can give here so coming back to the username and password so you have a team of people who are using the same azure devops the same pipeline so what if you are in a situation where your username and password might get revealed to the others the team to the people in the team to the others in the team so that is an option for that so go back to the variables here next to the task you have this variable tab and coming back to the pipeline variable so in fact there are two other there's one more other option you have the variable groups but here if you click on the pipeline variables click on add and you can enter your username so this is the name so which is the username and then you can enter the value here for example if your username is literals law you can choose this and you can change you can log this so that nobody in your team can have access to it and then the same way we will add the password so you can enter the password again here and you can lock it so that nobody else in the team will have access to the pipelines that you have created and then coming back to the task you can enter the username here so the format is going to be dollar brackets open bracket and close bracket so this is the format to enter the variable group and then again i'm opening the bracket and then at the end so this is the format of the username and password so in this way you can enter your username and password so that nobody else will be able to see the credentials so now we have made all the setup and once you save and Q so you can add the comment like created the pipeline and running a smoke test or anything and then the branch tag you can it mostly it will be main in your project so you can choose main and then click on save and run so once you click on save and run automatically the pipeline will be queued and it will be executed